Hey everyone, I wanted to make a quick video about this recent announcement from Google that they're deprecating Kotlin Android extensions. So I wanted to talk about why this feature was useful in order to get rid of some of the view boilerplate in your Android app. Uh, what is Google recommending as the new thing to migrate to, which is called view binding, and give you some more context about uh, what was the issue with Kotlin Android extensions. So basically demonstrate a lot of the points in this article. And the reason this is important is because many of the tutorials that I have made and many of the tutorials that you're going to find out in the wild were relying on this functionality in Kotlin Android extensions. And so having the awareness of this no longer being available by default in newer versions of Android Studio will help you be less confused if you're following along tutorials. And it is also just something that you should keep in mind in terms of modern Android development. What I have here is Android Studio 4.0, which is no longer the latest version of Android Studio. But the reason I want to start here is just to show you the classic way of finding views and the improvement that Kotlin, Android Kotlin extensions offered. So I have basically an empty project. And what I have here is a layout file, which has a text view. And that text view has an ID of TV Hello World. So a fundamental part of any kind of app development is you would like to be able to get references to the views on the screen from your code programmatically, right? So in this case, we have a Kotlin project. So in the main activity.kotlin file, we would like to be able to modify some property of this text view. So the way you would do this by default, kind of the dumb way of doing it, would be to declare a member variable, which is late init var. Late init means late initialization because we're gonna be setting the value of this variable equal to something later on, but we're declaring it of type text view. And that's because the widget that we're trying to modify is a text view. And then in the onCreate lifecycle method of the activity, this is where we're going to set the content view to be the r.layout.activity main, which is re referencing this XML file. And now we can use a special method called findViewById in order to get a reference to that text view. And then we can modify a property, for example, text, and saying using findViewById. And if I run that, let's see what happens. We get this updated text view. So the improvement that Android Kotlin extensions offered is that we no longer need any of this boilerplate for declaring the text view up here and then getting the find view by ID. So we can get rid of both of these actually. And let me update the text here to say using Kotlin synthetics because the name of this feature, which is allowing us to do this kind of magic of referencing the ID of the views automatically is called Kotlin synthetics, which is part of the Android Kotlin plugin. And that's what uh, we were looking at earlier, right? So this plugin is adding in some extra code when you run your application, which creates that binding between the ID in the activity main and the actual Kotlin code. And so you can see how that's what we're importing any other widgets in this layout. We can start referencing immediately in our main activity. So let me prove that this just works like normal. And now you can see we are getting an updated text view, which says using Kotlin synthetics. And so the way this all works really is if you open up the build.gradle file, by default in Android Studio 4.0, you're going to have this apply plugin, Kotlin Android extensions. And that is what is introducing this extra bit of code to do that mapping of the view to the variable name here. Now let's switch to Android Studio 4.1, which is the most recent version of Android Studio as of August 2020. And what you'll notice here is the build.gradle file, the same file as what we were looking at in AS 4.0, the main difference is that we no longer have the Kotlin Android extensions plugin. And the reason is because like we've talked about, it's deprecated. And so if you really wanted to still utilize the Kotlin synthetics, you could go ahead and add this back in, but because it's deprecated, this is not really recommended. And instead you should be using what Google is pushing, which is called view binding. So let me show you how that looks. Let me start by showing the activity main is identical to what we had before, which is just a single text view, which has the ID of TV Hello World. And our objective is in the main activity.kotlin file to update the text to sh say using view binding. So there are two main steps for using view binding. First is in the build.gradle, you need to add a build feature. So it's build features. And then inside of here, you want to set the view binding property to true. Um, tap on sync now to sync the Gradle changes. And now in the main activity, we want to actually get a reference to the view binding object. And this is going to be a generated class that the view binding will construct for us. And the convention is that it's going to be the layout file in Pascal case with binding appended to it. So in this example, it's going to be 
private late init var binding and the type of it is like we talked about activity main binding and you want to have autocomplete help you out here so it'll be activity main binding and you can see what import got added here and now instead of set content view we are going to be setting the value of the binding equal to activity main binding dot inflate and then we're passing in the layout inflator here the layout inflator is a property on the activity or on the context so that's what we're passing in there and now you can grab a reference to the root element of the binding. So the root here is referencing this constraint layout. You can see how Anderson is helpfully pointing that out as a hint here. That's because the root element here is a constraint layout. And now we can call the set content view like we did before with view. And finally, now in order to update the text view, we can say binding dot TV hello world dot text, and then say using view binding. So the main change here is that any of the other widgets that we add into the constraint layout, we're going to be referencing through this binding object. So I'll say binding dot TV hello world and then set the property on it. So let's check if this works. And you can see that we do get this new application and it says using view binding. Both the Android view binding approach and the Kotlin synthetic approach lead to way less boilerplate code compared to find view by ID. But I think you'd also agree with me when I say that the view binding approach is a bit more complicated than synthetics. With view binding, we have to have this binding object and then inflate it using the layout inflator. And then finally, we're able to get references to different widgets on the screen through this binding object. And actually, there's a bit more complication, which I'll point you to in the documentation for fragments. So you have to think about when you're nulling out that view binding object. And so it does beg the question, why did Google deprecate the Kotlin synthetics approach? And the answer, if you go back to the blog post, comes down to this issue of nullability and polluting the global namespace with Kotlin synthetics. And so let me demonstrate that. If I go back to Android Studio 4.0, what I've done here is I've created one more activity called another activity, which has a corresponding layout file called like activity another. And the ID here is TV another world. And so, you know, you could do the same approach where in another activity.kotlin, we are able to get this import from the synthetics and then update the text of this text view to be all good. However, if I do the same thing in main activity, nothing is preventing me. There's no build time or compile time validation that, hey, this TV in other world doesn't exist. This text view doesn't exist back in activity main.xml. And so as soon as you run this and we execute this code, we are going to actually crash our application and you'll see something like this. As your application gets bigger and bigger, you could potentially have one layout file for portrait mode, one for landscape mode, and it becomes really hard to figure out where is the actual issue if you're using synthetics. With view binding, on the other hand, you're going to get build time nullability checks, and you're also not going to have this issue of two different views in your project having the same ID name by accident, and that could cause issues. So that's the reason why Google is moving toward the new approach starting with Android 4, Studio 4.1 uh, where they have view binding. And you actually won't even have that plugin for Android Kotlin extensions. So really this is the path forward and this is what I'll start using in my tutorials as well. That's all I had for this video. Let me know if you have any questions, drop a comment and I'd love to help out. See you all soon.